Hello everyone and welcome back to Game Brigade. I am Brian Greer and if you are new to my show, we do reviews, previews, playthroughs and have conversations on our favorite board games. So if that sounds interesting to you, make sure you hit the subscribe button and join the Game Brigade community. Today we're taking a look at Kingless. We're going to find out if the Dwarven land is worthy of a king or a fool. Let's find out. Welcome to Kingless. For your first round, remove the King's Crown and Fool's Hat cards from the deck and place them aside. Shuffle the deck and deal all players five cards. Place the remaining deck face down at the center of the playing surface. This will be your draw deck for all players. If there are players with the Fool's Hat and King's Crown cards awarded from a previous round, resolve their text actions. The players with the King's Crown takes the first turn. If no player has the King's Crown, the shortest player takes the first turn in honor of their Dwarven heritage. Okay, welcome back. So today we're going to be taking a look at Kingless. This is brought to you by 219 Games. It's for two to six players. It takes roughly about 20 to 30 minutes to play, depending on your player count. This game was originally a Kickstarter. It is now available for sale. Uh, you can check the online stores for 219 for details on that. We are not going to be doing our standard review coverage for this one, where we normally dive into the how to play and then go into our final thoughts. Because this one has a little bit of a lighter gameplay mechanics i decided we're just going to briefly touch on them and then we'll talk about our general discussion where we talk about what we liked and didn't like regarding uh kingless so with that let's get started so kingless has three different types of card types you have dwarves items and events and in this game you're going to be playing cards from your hand until you are told to stop or you play a dwarf or an item on the board the requirements on the end game is to have at least five dwarfs played. So as soon as someone in the game has five dwarfs in front of them, the end game will trigger. So with that, how do you respond and how do people play? Playing Kingless is fairly easy in terms of what most card games are going to be like. You're going to have a hand of five cards. Uh, what's an interesting mechanic is that you are able to play continuously until you play either a dwarf or an item. So you can play these event cards over and over and over, triggering different types of events, triggering different types of situations. But as soon as you play a single event or item, the round will end. I do find that interesting because it allows you to dig through your hand or respond to the events that are happening on the board. And you have a little bit of control, but again, you are very much dictated by the type of cards you play. So with that, that is pretty much how the game plays. You're just going to be playing cards from your hand, uh, attacking your opponent's players or their, their board. It's very much of a take that system until someone has five uh, dwarfs on the field and it triggers the end game uh, round. So let's talk about what I thought about Kingless. So Kingless is a card game that relies very heavily on uh, take that mechanics and also uh, randomness in the variety of types of cards you play. Kingless is very unique in the sense that it has a lot of cards that are unique and that respond and interact uh, differently with specific named cards. Now this is could be a plus or a minus depending on your view. Uh, I do appreciate the variety and variability in the card types that they're giving us and the way that each card interacts in the world of the Dwarven land that they've created. Uh, I do think though that there are times where this can be kind of hard uh, to manage, especially at lower player counts, because you are drawing less cards in the deck at the given time, there are situations where uh, you will have cards in your hand that interact with specific dwarves or specific items, and because neither player is drawing enough cards at that time, they can become lesser valuable cards I think is the most accurate way I could state it they're not necessarily worthless because every dwarf has a value at the top of the card to tell you how much that specific card is worth um, so they're definitely going to have a value to it but if a card says gutter x card and your opponent hasn't played that card guttering gutter means discarding it to the the trash can so that it's off the board uh, you as a player might hold on to that for extended periods of time before you have an opportunity to play it so i found where kingless shines is at the higher player counts and i found that with that you kind of start seeing the theme 
or the direction of where this game fits into a collection. This game is very much more of a party, lightweight, uh, filler game where you're going to play this either at the beginning or after of an event where you're going to just play a game for fun where it's very low stakes involvement in the game that has elements of uh, replayability where they want you to play again using the Jester and the uh, King's Crown. These are mechanics that basically the winner and the person who got the worst score will be either the King or the Fool. And they have uh, effects with them that will carry on to the next round. They are interesting in the sense that they do cause you to play the game again to try to remove the uh, the, the joking Fool if you're the Fool. Uh, but I don't care for the effects. In fact, the effects are fairly powerful powerful in, in the king's favor I felt like they really swung the favor to the person who had just won now is even more powerful than they were before and the fool has an even harder chance to win so I thought that was an interesting mechanic that they chose to do that uh, but it definitely does work in sense of trying to get people to play the game repeatedly in a single session uh, so back to the player count thoughts though where I found this game to be most enjoyable is when you were creeping creeping towards that five to six player count because at that point the game enters into a more strategic gameplay sense where players are less likely to just dump out their hand as quickly as possible to score the five dwarves and end the game. You're going to have response cards that can stop a turn or cancel an effect or take dwarves from the field. So players are going to try to sculpt their hands and manners to protect their own dwarves as well as take advantage of taking over any dwarves that your opponents play. So to kind of give you an example, now this might be a niche in terms of what I know, but there was a, a mechanic with uh, Magic the Gathering called Elder Dragon Highlander or Commander, depending on where you're at in the realm of Magic. And I sensed this was very much in the sense of you were to play multiplayer Commander in a very light down session where players are able to police each other, keep each other in check as you sculpt your hand before you play fully out. So that's why I felt like the player time could be variable. It does say 20 minutes on here. We found our games were very quick at lower player counts, a little higher uh, at the higher player counts. Uh, and I really appreciate the different types of variable strategies that come in at those higher levels. So in terms of the weight of the game and the replayability of the game, very lightweight game, uh, simple to learn. The, the instruction pamphlet that comes with the game is very clear in terms of here's the directions of what the game does. The cards are also pretty clear in terms of their, their, their names. They have pretty easy uh, taglines. They'll just say recruit or gutter or stop or halt. They're very easy to learn easy to pick up. Fun factor in terms of did I have fun playing the, uh, Kingless and would I recommend this game? I would say I had fun at higher player counts. Uh, Kingless was an anomaly for me where playing at the two player count, which was where I, you know, I try to play at multiple variety of player counts and two is normally what I like playing card games at because it's at that point a duel uh, I found was very shallow, unfortunately. Um, not totally bad because the mechanics are still there and the gameplay is there but i found that if a player had the right hand they could just rush their hand and play as many dwarves as they can over the course of five turns and if they have any types of effects to counter or take your other your opponent's dwarves uh, because of the way the game works in terms of n drawing cards at a random ev event uh, you can get in a situation where you just can't stop your opponent uh, so that's why I find the fun factor to me is where you're bringing in the more of the strategy and more of the reducing the events of randomness completely. Because you might, as uh, in a five player game, might have a bad opening hand, but use the effects of the game to draw more cards and let other people kind of police the situation while you prepare yourself. So you have a little bit of time to work through that before you go all in. So would I recommend this game? I would recommend this if you have a group of players that enjoys lighthearted games uh, that are quick and can easily play four or five rounds in about an hour. I think this is perfect for your crew. Uh, but again, I want to make sure I, I emphasize that at higher player counts is where you're going to see the true magic of Kingless come in. I do have a free copy that I'm going to be sending out for a giveaway. So if you guys are interested in a copy of Kingless, I'm going to have you leave a hashtag down, down in the comments down below of Kingless. This is going to be restricted to U.S. Uh, 
viewers only. So I have to be shipping this myself. So unfortunately, because of that, I have to ship within the United States. So you're going to leave a comment down below, hashtag Kingless. Uh, one week from the posting of this, we will then draw the winner and I will have you contact me through email. So make sure you're taking a look at that. Again, if you're interested in this, leave a comment down below. This is Brian from Game Brigade. I hope you guys like this quick and uh, dirty review. I tried my best to uh, keep this one moving as, as flowingly as possible. If you like this content and you want me to keep doing this up, make sure you leave a, a comment and hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm. I will talk to you all very soon. Thank you.